All right, this is a really quick run through with the um, i1 match, and I'm using the i1 uh, Pro calibrator. So I'm going to select uh, a display profile. It's going to be a printer, that's a display, that's a camera. I'm going to do a display, and I always like to go with the advanced selection. I'm going to select an LCD because that's what I'm calibrating. <coughs> And uh, here's where I make my calibration settings decisions. Um, and these are pretty much what I always run and would recommend anybody always run. And that's medium white, uh, D6500, a gamma of 2.2. Whether you're running Mac or PC, by the way, a gamma of 2.2 and a luminance of 120 for an LCD. I never run the ambient light check. It just uh, it, it's never worked for me. So uh, I'm going to click through the second screen for the calibration. And this is where the i1 Pro needs to be basically baselined um, with itself. So um, you put it on this little target. Uh, the little target is actually a ceramic white uh, value. And, uh, and you just push the button and it calibrates. And that's basically so the device knows that Regardless of what's happened to it since the last time I used it, it's it's running at the same in the same uh, parameters. <clears throat> Hit OK. Um, mount the i1 Pro on its little hanger thingy, and hang on the display. And I'm hanging it right in the middle of your screen. Um, I'm gonna skip through a lot of these steps because. Um, but I will explain them. The contrast setting uh, is something that I, I uh, generally don't do on a Mac Cinema display, for example. You can't, you can't adjust the contrast. So um, I calibrate a lot of them. Um, on uh, my Samsung Sync Master 204B, the contrast doesn't really work right. Um, I don't know what it's adjusting, but it's not adjusting the right thing. <laughs> Uh, but on a good display like a uh, like a less C color accurate display or an ISO, um, you can you can set the contrast. Um, I'm going to click through the next one. RGB controls, same thing. Um, when I set the RGB controls on my Samsung, it makes a complete mess. So I don't know what it's doing, but it's not doing RGB controls. And I can also have the choice of RGB presets. Same story. Doesn't really work. I just click through that screen. Brightness is something that I will uh, test. So here, for example, is um, how my my monitor works. Um, every every monitor is going to be different because you're using the on-screen menu controls. I'm not even sure if that'll show up, but um, I'll hit start, and uh, the i1 goes through the finding the calibrator process. Uh, it's looking. It's looking. Not there. There. Not there, there. <laughs> and finally it finds it. It's reading the patches. You can see the luminance indicator up in the upper corner. As soon as it gets done, I'll drag that so you can see. All right, so let's go drag this to where we can see it. You can see the luminance is a little bit low. The target is 120, the current is 115.9, and I'm just going to go into my my on monitor controls and boost that up a little bit. And uh, you know, any place in that green area is fine. I mean, it, it's so dependent on um, room temperature, all sorts of variables. So uh, once once I get it in the ballpark, that's good enough. And I'll just hit stop, and then um, this screen. Um, <clears throat> now it's starting the color calibration, actually. And um, it's right now all it's doing is trying to find the display. It's sort of a process of elimination. And uh, once it finds it, which I think it should or right now, yep, yeah, it'll start the, the calibration process. And now it's feeding the... Um, spectrophotometer or the colorimeter, depending on what you have, um, known patches of values, and it's actually reading what uh, the actual values 
r. So it's it's giving you a theory, a theoretical point, and then it's measuring the actual point, and then it's going to build essentially a lookup table to, to find the corrections it needs. So we're just going to wait for this to do this. So this is the, the last screen you're going to see. Um, it's going to read all those. It takes about, uh, it took about 10 minutes um, to read all those patches, and then it does all the calculation, and it makes a, uh, it makes a, uh, an ICC profile you can see here. It also tells you sort of the variations and all sorts of other cool geeky stuff that you may want. But, um, it's funny, I, I, I know a lot of people who actually rename the monitor profile to suit their needs. I stopped doing that because uh, I just could not remember a naming convention. And I, I don't see any reason you, you know, you, that you need to rename this anyway, unless uh, you're trying to identify the device you used or uh, the monitor, if you have multiple monitors. Um, you can also tell the software to remind you <clears throat> to calibrate after a certain amount of time. That's kind of nice to, to activate. And then um, you just hit finish calibration you get this message and that will save that as your default